Hello everyone, uh, Ryan from iOS Mars here. Um, today I wanted to show you this uh, excellent, excellent uh, MIDI sequencer program. Uh, it's called M Sequencer. Uh, oh, I believe the full name of it is uh, MIDI Pattern Sequencer. But uh, if you search the store for M Sequencer, it, it this will come up. Um, that's what it's called when you look at the icon. It says uh, M Sequencer. But uh, anyhow. Uh, this is just an excellent, excellent sequencing program. Uh, it's brought to you by the the same company that uh, released uh, the auto audio mastering app recently. Uh, their name is um, iMusic Album. Uh, I know weird name for uh, a music app developer, but whatever. Anyhow, let me get started with this because uh, yeah, it takes up uh, a really complicated program, a lot of options. So it's going to take up a lot of time basically I'm going to be showing you today just how to get started with this I'm only going to be using um, the Korg iPoly 6 with this so I'll be sending out to uh, eight different channels inside the uh, Korg iPoly 6 so um, I'm just going to use that but of course any of these channels and anything can be all sent to different apps um, so um, let me get started with this first of all You'll notice that there's patterns across the top here. There's eight patterns, and each inside each pattern is uh, eight separate tracks. Each one of these tracks now can be uh, assigned to a different app. So I guess technically, if it was possible, and it's not, you could probably have 64 different apps running straight from M Sequencer uh, with your sequences all running through all 64. Not really possible with an iPad, of course. Uh, maybe you could pull off something like uh, adding tons and tons of keyboard samplers inside Beatmaker and running, you know, multiple, multiple uh, keyboard samplers at once. But, you know, that's as close as you're going to get. Anyhow, we don't have to worry about that. That doesn't, we can assign these all to the same app, so it's not going to matter. I'm just saying that's a possibility um, in this app, incredibly advanced uh, sequencer app. So, um, we have the the main patterns across the top. We have our song page here, which is also in kind of a pattern format, and I'll get into that a little bit later. We have our settings page where you you'd set up your uh, your internal MIDI controllers and uh, things like that. Um, there's a a bunch of different options here that you can view. Uh, it's, a lot of it's really handy. And then we have our project setting. I just made up this brand new. It's a uh, it's a, just a test run. It has nothing in it. It's basic. It's how the app would come. So let's start off by uh, getting this started because we don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, down in the corner here, you'll notice that there is a, a little box with uh, four, four buttons. Uh, transport, Edit Pattern, Edit Cell, and the keyboard. This is going to be the most important thing when we're making our sequences, is this area. So uh, we'll pop back in, in and out through those. So I'm going to go ahead and stay on transport here. And transport, we can click the, the channel in pattern one, channel one. And we'll just give it a name here. I'm going to put my drums inside this. So uh, we'll, we'll put bass drum here. This is a bass drum. And uh, you can select uh, iPoly 6, select device, and have it come up. So I'm going to turn off the number one channel, and I'll turn in number three because that's my uh, that's my bass drum channel. Of course, when you're doing this yourself and you're not using iPoly 6 or uh, many multiple apps, you're going to have to remember which channel is selected on which app, or perhaps write it down on a piece of paper on the side. You know, that's what I do. I write it down so I can uh, I can remember what I'm doing. Because you know, once you get into can, controlling uh, three three apps with uh, multiple channels it gets a little confusing on which channel goes to which app and and so forth anyhow it's nice that we can uh, we can name these so as you as you see here let me make a snare snare whoops and my snare is on channel five and we'll go to this one. Crash. 
you actually don't have to select iPoly 6 here. Um, if you leave it as the MIDI pattern sequencer, it'll send out to all devices, and because I'm only using iPoly 6, uh, it'll just send there. You know, if you're going to have more than one app open, you're obviously going to have to set that up a little bit better, but let me get this done really quickly. Pack closed. These are just the drum, the the drum area of iPoly six. So basically, channels three through eight. Synth one. Oops. I'll give this a different name because uh, it's going to conflict. Synth effects one. Seven. And. Oops. Two. That's fine. All right. So uh, we got our uh, we got it all set up here now. So I'm just going to quickly make a drum beat. So what you do to make a drum beat is you're going to want to go to the keyboard here. If you have your own keyboard uh, hooked up, as I as I suggested, then uh, it's going to make this a lot easier. But uh, C4 is uh, the iPoly or the iPoly 6 um, default, uh, like the clean channel for the drums, uh, without any uh, anything else. But we can actually we can actually change the key right here. We're gonna stay at uh, C4. So I'm just gonna make this drum beat really quickly. One of the things we're gonna have to do click the edit cell here. On the bottom we'll have our duration. The duration the note will last. You know because if we're using a key or a cymbal we're gonna want it to ring out a bit and this is really good. So we have some default settings you know per bar and then we have a slider here that we can also slide. As you can see the tail comes out as we slide. Really nice. So I'll put that just up there and it'll remember whatever setting you used last so when I click this one it'll have the same settings as the last time on the edit cell here again on the top is the velocity where we can set the velocity of these notes which is really nice but uh, we won't get into that right now you know if you're using your external MIDI controller as you hit the keys it'll auto detect that velocity and put it in there it's the the vertical the vertical dots here. So anyways, I'll continue going on with this. Crash. Whoops. Let me go to my transport. I had that on the wrong uh wrong one here. Crash should be four. So there we go. Go back and edit this so We'll give it a quarter step. Now I'm going to give my hats here. And these in. And we have our synth effects, so it's good. up a little bit. That ought to do it for that. I'll add some synth 2 in here. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, use our keyboard. And we'll add one in there.
All right, so let's listen to this. Click transport, and it'll bring up some play options here. So I'm just going to play the pattern. So there we go. We got a nice little uh, industrial beat. So now quickly, I'm going to just uh, inside the second pattern here. I'm going to create my first synth riff. So let's go ahead and name this one synth one and we don't have to set up anything synth one actually is on uh, the first channel so let's go in and uh, we'll use our keyboard here let's listen to that all right c e g e all right now let's move on to our pattern two and i'm going to click transport again and we'll name this one synth two and select it and that one will be synth 2 whoops I'm gonna need to put this on channel 2 for the second synth and we'll just go ahead and uh, use our keyboard again let's uh... let's go up a little bit, Down a little bit. Whoops. And we'll turn this gate down just a tiny, tiny bit. Just enough so that we can get another one in here. And done. Keyboard. Alright, so let's, uh, let's pop over. Now we got all our patterns here. Let's pop over to the song, and we'll build our song a little bit. So, um, let's go to Patterns. And we got our cell selected, and we'll just click pattern one, pattern one, pattern one, because we want the drum. Whoops, we want the drum beat to continue playing throughout the song. And now, at uh, the second second uh, half of the of this, we'll uh, we'll add in our beat two, and now we'll add in three. And this will build our song in a nice little progression. So we'll have drums, then we'll have our first synth, and then we'll have all three all at once. So let's try this. We'll click transport. Alright, so there we got our start of our little song. You know, now we could throw uh, iPoly 6 into Audio Bus and, uh, and we could uh, record the output of this and then, you know, loop it in Beatmaker 2 or Cubasis or whatever you want. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just an excellent app. I can't even begin to show you guys as much as I want to show you with this app right now. You know, I'm already at uh, 13 minutes into this video, and uh, I haven't even touched it. So uh, I'm going to get back to you guys with uh, some more videos on how to use this app, but uh, I'll just say oh, it is amazing the stuff you can do with this. Uh, you, can, you can program your whole song uh, quite easily and uh, do a lot of different things with it. So um, we'll get into that uh, a little bit later, you know, sending clock and uh, adding events and uh, things like that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's getting started with uh, M Sequencer or MIDI Pattern Sequencer. All right, thank you everyone, and I, I hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial and pick this app up on the App Store. All right, thank you. Goodbye.